morning. Hi, good morning. Welcome back to Yarn on the Beach. This is episode 76. Can't believe we've been at the beach 76 days in a row. Well, not in a row. I always take off Sundays. <laughs> Let me get this fixed just a smidge here. Uh, it's 41 degrees out here, so it's a little bit chilly, but welcome back to Yarn on the Beach. Episode 76 is at Vanderbilt Beach. This is in Naples, Florida. Good morning, Karen. Thanks for joining. So we're just a smidge further south than we have been recently. I figured because of the weather, uh, we'd have pretty good luck with um, parking this morning, and I did. Good morning, Sherry. Good morning, Elisa. Good morning, Anne. Thank you all for joining me. It's 41 degrees outside which is why I went back to Vanderbilt Beach because I knew there wouldn't be a trouble, trouble parking this morning. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, Ruth. There's a reason why I wanted to be down here this far south this morning. I'll tell you that in a couple minutes. Just wait for everybody to get here. Good morning, Donna, Brenda, Elizabeth. Thanks, Elizabeth. This is a free pattern on my website. Good morning, Brandy. It's a basket weave knit hat. It's a pattern on my website and a video series where I show you how to knit it in rows and rounds. So no matter what level knitter you are, you can definitely make this hat. It's not difficult. I can show you. I'm wearing the one that was knit in the round. And this is the one that was knit in rows and you can see they are absolutely identical. Yes, the colors are amazing this morning. Very intense colors at the beach this morning. We've got a much darker body of water and that beautiful golden color right at the horizon and then back to a deeper blue at the top. Yeah, really, really beautiful colors here today. Can't wait to show you beautiful colors on a warm day though. <laughs> You know, uh, Karen has a point, basket weave is really fun to do. The other thing that's really fun about basket weave is that a yarn like this that has texture, this uh, Be So Tender yarn is my worsted weight organic cotton, and it has a thick and thin texture to it. And sometimes I feel like textured yarn looks best with simple stitches, and so that slight variation between stockinette and reverse stockinette in basket weave I think is one of the prettiest ways to show off a textured yarn like this. Thanks, Donna. I'm glad you enjoy it so much. Whew. Need some more tea. Drinking green tea with fresh lemon juice this morning. Been hearing about, yes, Elisa, Be So Tender is very soft. Very, very soft. Uh, that is, um, Be So Tender was chosen as the artisan crate for knit crate this morning. Good morning, Rocchio. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Rocio, Rocchio? Not sure, but good morning and thanks for joining me. Ah, here comes the sun. For those of you who have been joining me for a while, you know that we normally meet here on the beach at 745, but with the time change, Marlins Tennis Academy has decided to make tennis start a few minutes later because it's dark otherwise so that's why we're about a half hour late right now and we'll be going back to our normal 745 once we get closer to summer and the morning light uh, starts earlier. Uh, Donna wants to know if I knit or crochet most. I don't think I don't think either I think I'm pretty I think I'm pretty even space between knitting and crochet, although once in a while I do think I lean towards crochet just because of um, maybe requests for videos or patterns, but in general I'd like to think that I'm 50-50. Mm. Much warmer when the sun comes out. I wanted to show you another way to style the leggings today, but I don't know if I feel like taking my coat off yet. <laughs> I could show you a little bit, I guess. So you know the Amazon tank tops that I've been wearing and I normally tie it up on one thigh like that. Well, I decided to put a jean shirt on and tie it at my rib cage to give a little bit of waist definition. Otherwise, these tank tops are just so loosey-goosey that you don't see any of your definition. So by tying it, like at my rib cage, my natural waist and the waistband of the pants is here. So I tied it here to give that definition between bust and waist. And uh, let's see if I can back up enough. Huh. It's 
too dark, it's too dark still. Anyway, that's what I was going to show you this morning, but it's too cold. <laughs> oh, Susie's wearing her Be So Brave poncho this morning. Great, but it's frost on her roof. Burr. Good morning, Alice. Thanks for joining. Ooh, burr. What else was I gonna show you this morning? Oh, I was gonna tell you why I decided to come south this morning. Oh, Brandy, I'm glad I showed it to you then. Great. I'll try to take better pictures of my outfit later to show you. Um, I'll post them somewhere, Instagram or Facebook later. Oh, Alice, you know what? That's the beauty of the camera. My camera flips the angle so that I can show right-handed and left-handed. Um, I don't actually crochet left-handed nearly as well as I crochet right-handed. I do both. Donna likes to color. There's nothing wrong with coloring. Did you know that I have a coloring book? It's for sale on my website and on my Amazon uh, shop too. I made a, I actually made a um, coloring book out of most of the prints from the Redbubble shop. That's where I started and I added more too, but I do have a coloring book if you're interested. Thanks, Elizabeth. Karen can crochet right and left-handed as well. Yes, I can too. I just don't practice enough left-handed to be really sufficient at it. So for me, I use the technology of the camera to flip it around so that you can see it both ways, which is great too. Anything you can do to help people learn is awesome. And if it's technology that helps, I have no problem with that. Thanks, Donna. Let me know. Um, I'm certain it's on my Amazon page, but I'm not 100% sure it's on my website. If you uh, don't find it on my website, let me know because I will uh, add it back on if it's not. I think it's there, though confuses people when doing both on the same project. Confuse it doing right and left, you mean, Karen? Thanks, Donna. Is anybody else crafting this morning? I'm gonna show you what I'm working. Oh, it's gonna tell you why I wanted to be this far south. Thank you, Susie. It's a free pattern on my website. It comes with instructions for both knitting in the round and knitting in rows, so whatever level of knitter you are, you can make this hat. Okay, so you remember I'm working on a collaboration project with another company, who I'm not going to mention just yet, but I promise I'll be mentioning soon. And this is the shawl that I designed for them. Oh, my hair keeps going in my mouth. It's that lip gloss effect. Does anybody else have that problem where if you wear lip gloss, your hair knows and it goes like this right to it? <laughs> Brenda started the beaded scarf yesterday. Wonderful. Thank you so much for ordering from me. Okay, so you remember this shawl that I'm making. I haven't blocked it yet because that's going to be one of the videos that I do. Um, haven't finished weaving in the ends either because that's going to be another video for the series. Uh, so I'm going to do videos on how to crochet every part, how to read the charts and the pattern, how to weave in the ends, and then how to block it in the end. So, after talking to the customer yesterday, we determined that beading probably isn't the right idea for this project. And she was saying she wanted to show it both ways. Well, I can't show it both ways to do the tutorial videos because in order to do the blocking video, I need to have them on or off. So this morning, I'm going to be taking the beads off of this project. And you know what? It's gonna look gorgeous without the beads too so I'm not necessarily worried about it and I did take one photo already of the beads so I can at least show that photo in the pattern to show that uh, to show it as a secondary option so I need to unravel my last edging row hi Shirley thanks for joining I see a couple people posted their projects I'd missed it but I'll be able to look back later. Anne's making baby cardigans for her granddaughter. How fun. I love making baby stuff. So cute. Hmm. 
Okay. Almost ready to unravel. Connie's waiting on an order for me. Okay, cool. Thank you for ordering from me. Hi, Elizabeth. Thanks for joining. Ah, you know what? I was wondering why I'm having so much trouble unraveling this. It's because it's the end, not the beginning. I find it tough to figure that out. If you've done one row in a color, I find it tough sometimes to figure out which side is the beginning and which is the end. But you know, as soon as you start trying to unravel it, because it doesn't unravel from the beginning. <laughs> good morning, Emily. Good morning, Elizabeth. Oh, I missed another good morning. Sorry about that. Okay, here we go. Now we can start unraveling. And I already know the stitch that I use, so that won't be a problem. Just need to hang on to all my cutie little beads. Oh, Elizabeth, your motif magic is arriving for you today. Yay, wonderful. I'm so glad. Good morning, Sharon. Good morning, Judy. Thank you all for joining. So I'm trying to catch the beads as I unravel because I don't want to lose these little cuties. Elizabeth. Oh, yeah, if you order directly from me, Elizabeth, I will be autographing it for you. No problem. I'd uh, be happy to do that. Just so you know, there is a back order date listed on my website, though, so if you order for me today, it won't ship until next week because I'm waiting on my next shipment of books. But I just got a notice from the printer this morning that they are shipping today, so I should have it by, oh gosh, by Tuesday or Wednesday next week. And as soon as it arrives, I'll ship it right away. Thanks, Elizabeth. Audrey's working on a kerchief scarf. That sounds nice and easy. Knit two together and yarn over. That's a nice, easy pattern. Oh, Emily, you received my face cream. Wonderful. I'm glad you like it. I love it. It's so rich and moisturizing, but not greasy. And that's like the best of both worlds, in my opinion. I like a cream that feels thick and feels like it has lots of moisturizers, but that doesn't uh, leave my skin feeling greasy. Like, I put my face cream on in the morning when I get up, and then I still put on full makeup to come down here and do yarn on the beach. And you notice I'm able to cover, I'm able to put makeup on and not be greasy. And I think that's amazing for a super rich moisturizer. Thanks, Emily. I'm so glad you love it. It smells wonderful too. All the essential oils that I put in there, I think smell so good together. And I did all sorts of research when was, um, developing it to make sure that I picked essential oils that are good for anti-wrinkle, for smoothing out skin. They even say that one, there's, they say that um, the frankincense essential oil that I put in there has the same effects as Botox. Elizabeth is planning a visit from New Jersey to Florida. Wonderful. Hopefully you can come down and join us for our knitting club on Tuesday night. That would be great. I know everybody would love to meet you. We have a wonderful group of people that meet every Tuesday night. And you know what? It's different people every Tuesday. Some days we have a big group. Some days we have a little group. And it's not always the same people but it's all really nice people, and um, I know you'll get a really warm welcome if you come join us. Yes, Emily, I use it around my eyes. I use it um, on all my, I use it on my face, my neck, and my chest. I have a friend who lives in England, 
and she when she comes to visit she always gets a jar of my face cream and she uses it on her wrinkles on her chest here you know how some people get wrinkles you know in this flat part of your chest and she it gets rid of the wrinkles on her chest for her she loves it I have a friend in Texas who used to get Botox up here on their forehead and they stopped getting Botox after starting to use my cream but I've never done any of that stuff I just like how rich and moisturizing it feels on my skin that's what I love about it so I can't speak for the other things oh Shirley that is so cool Shirley's working on, Shirley's a musician and she's working on a theme song for yarn on the beach that is really cool I love that got him dropping my beads all over the place here gotta be careful Oh, Alice, that's nice. Isn't it fun to host a knitting and crochet music? Or music, I'm reading and talking. To host a knitting and crochet group. Alice is in South Africa, and she hosts a small group on Fridays. Very nice. Siona, this pattern of the hat that I'm wearing is on my website. It's called the, it's made out of Be So Tender yarn, and it's a basket weave pattern. And it also, has instructions for both knitting in the rows and knitting in the round so no matter what your skill level is you can make this hat I also have video tutorials on YouTube for it as well but once you find the pattern on my website the videos should be linked there okay making progress here last week the ladies at my knitting group were talking about doing a, uh, what would you call it? A field trip, that's what I would call it. Uh, talking about, they one, of, one lady mentioned that there's a really nice tea shop in Fort Myers. Hold on a second. Oh, Siona, do I have a crochet hat that is similar? I have lots of crochet hats on my website. I don't believe I have a basket weave one, but I'd have to check. But the beauty of the way you look for patterns on my website is that you can search by any of those any way you want. So if you just search by hat, you can see all of them. You can look up, you can look up patterns by hat, and then you can see all of the different hat patterns that are free on my website, and you can shop that way. So you might be able to find a crochet one that you love too. Okay all of the last round of the edging is off now and all of the beads are in this little pile here I think I collected all of them Let's see if you can see that oh, I dropped one again <laughs> all right we'll get those into a secure pocket maybe even find a crochet hook oh I've been working on this project too you're welcome Siona almost done with the edging on this piece I've got crochet edging around the entire perimeter except one I ran out of yarn in a parking lot yesterday you know tennis moms aka soccer moms we do a lot of work in parking lots don't we so I've got two edges left to do so I need to grab one more be so fine tidbit in pure gold before I can finish that one I know I grabbed my crochet hook this morning and I was going to show you the beginning of the last row of the shawl. Got to finish it so I can start doing the videos and share it with my customer. I've seen a couple of uh, birds, but no one real curious down here this morning, huh? This is the beach where in the summertime I'll be able to show you when sharks let their babies nurse right at the shore. You see right like three feet into the water's edge, I mean really this close in, there will be, um, oh I don't know, dozens of baby sharks that are like this big. And, it, and I looked it up because I was so freaked out the first time I saw it. And the mother, I guess, sits a little further offshore and lets her babies practice eating. How cute is that? Oh, I mean, it's freaky as a swimmer and as a beachgoer, but as a nature and animal lover, I 
couldn't be more adorable. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start by tying our yarn to our crochet hook. And if you watch my videos, you know that I tie with a square knot, but if you tie with a slip knot, that's okay too. There's no wrong way to tie your yarn to a crochet hook any more than there is a wrong way to hold your yarn or your needles or your hook. How do you not pull a thread on the... Oh, Donna, I use, if I can find a loose enough woven scarf or a small enough, sharp enough crochet hook, I can avoid doing the thread line first. Uh, but it depends on the project, depends on the yarn, depends on the hook, and depends on the fabric. So it's all variable, and when, I, when it works out for me that way, it's pretty cool. Otherwise, I do do a line of sewn stitches first. Let's see. Nope, I started on the wrong side. Ha <laughs> ha. Not looking. Oh, so I wanted to tell you all. Alice, it is, it's kind of freaky, but kind of awesome at the same time. And hopefully this summer... Um, I don't see why we won't. One day I'll be able to share it with all of you when we come to this particular beach when I know it's the season for baby nurse sharks. <laughs> yep, Brandy, that's exactly why I do the square knot instead of the slip knot. I don't like how loosey-goosey it is when I work into it. Now, I'm sure that there are tips and tricks for people that do use slip knot, and I have no issue with that whatsoever. It's just uh, the way that I've done it causes me stress, and I prefer to do it in a way that doesn't cause me stress, stress which is a square knot. Yes, Donna, Mother Nature at her best. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do this first repeat of the pattern. You notice that I was creating a rather pointed edge to the net, and I showed it to you first with the beads on it. And you notice that these points came, these scallops came to a point. Well, look at when you take that last round off, you notice that it's not pointed, and that's because I made it pointed in this final row. And I'm going to show you how to do that now. So notice. This is just like a half circle medallion. So you start with a certain number of stitches, double the stitches, then double the stitches in every other stitch, just like you would do in a circular motif. It's that same construction style to create a half circle, okay? So now on this last row, I'm going to be able, be able to manipulate that shape by changing the length of my stitches so that we now are going to have a point. Let me make sure I can get this in camera. So we're going to start by crocheting a double crochet in each of the first 12 stitches. If anybody has any questions, let me know. Okay, so now in that 12th stitch, I'm going to also work a treble crochet, which is a little bit taller than a double crochet. And now in the next stitch, I'm going to work a treble crochet, chain three, and another treble crochet. Then I'm going to mirror what I did in the last stitch. I did double crochet treble so that I was increasing up in height. And now in the next stitch, I'm going to decrease in height by starting a treble first and then going to a double. And now double crochet in each of the remaining stitches in that scallop. Gosh, I hope that's showing up on camera. I can't see a thing right now. Maybe I should stop and see what anybody's saying. Good morning, Anna. Somebody shared a poem. I missed that too. 
Yes, Siona, that's what's going to create my point. And as soon as I finish double crocheting along the rest of this point of, of the scallop, then to really emphasize all of it, I'm going to single crochet in the next chain three space so that we bring that height of the stitch even down further. And look at that. It no longer looks like a half circle scallop. It looks like more of a rounded triangle. Cool, huh? Very simple, but very effective. Oh, good, Mary. I'm so glad you could see perfectly. So that's what I'll be doing for the rest of this now. And there will be more video and more information as I make the video tutorial series for the pattern. I already have the charts made. I have a chart for the actual shawl and a chart for the edging. And I have the line by line instructions complete. Just need to do the videos now. But can't do the videos till the sample's done. So <laughs> here we go. And I'm trying to figure out how to style the shawl for the photo shoot. Haven't come, uh, haven't been perfectly inspired yet, so I'm still thinking. It'll come to me. Thanks, Lily. I love the colors too. This is three colors of Be So Fine yarn in the Tidbit Trios which is the miniature size of each. So we have Calypso Lime, Lavender's First Romance, and Caribbean Turquoise. I think they turned out nice together. Very festive. 10, 11. Oh, so I was going to tell you why I wanted to be further south this morning. I was at the grocery store yesterday morning and I bought a little tub of cream cheese that was made with almond milk and it was flavored with chives and I brought it home and I was absolutely blown away that it tasted exactly like dairy cream cheese like I don't know if I have ever said that in my whole life that um, oh that's a good question Siona I'll tell you in a minute um, I've never tasted a of an alternative source to dairy that truly tasted just like it. And so it got me, th I read the ingredients and it got me thinking. It was made with a nut base and had live cultures in it. And I started thinking about it as I was working yesterday and decided, I think I want to make an attempt at this for homemade because the problem I had with this product is that it still had a ton of weird preservatives in it because it's something you have that has to sit on a shelf at a store. So I want to get some cashews, raw cashews, and the only place I can get them raw and local is probably Whole Foods, otherwise I'd have to buy them online. So Whole Foods is right around the corner from this beach, so I'm going there when I leave here to get, I, and I do have um, plant, I have a coconut based yogurt at home with live cultures in it, so I'm going to soak some cashews overnight, blend them, add a little bit of a starter of the so of coconut based yogurt with cultures and let that sit overnight and hopefully have homemade vegan cream cheese by, what day would I have it by then? Sunday! And add onion or I'll probably make a big enough batch to do a savory and a sweet version of it. But I'm super duper excited about it and uh, I will let you know how it turns out. So I'm three days away from knowing, but if it works out right, it will be vegan and probiotic. Um, hello, that's awesome <laughs> and delicious. It's the little things, right? So going back to Siona's question, she wanted to know how I came up with the names for my yarn, and it's a pretty silly story. Oh yes, Emily, I'm definitely adding chives. That's what made it so delicious. I might do a sun-dried tomato version at some point. I might do a fruit version at some point or a honey version. But for now, I'm starting with chai because it is amazing. I can't wait to try my hand at it. Oh, it's snowing in Denmark. I hope you're staying warm and dry indoors. Three, 
4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so the way I came up with the names for my yarn, and this is going to be crazy, but there's always method to madness. <laughs> I uh, started with Be So Fine yarn, and it was definitely a play on words with one of my first books, Crochet So Fine. And so it, uh, that was the original thought, but in order to make it stick, I knew when I developed my first yarn that I wasn't looking to just do one yarn. I knew I wanted to do, be a yarn company. So, you know, you have to start with one, but you have to, if you're gonna be smart about it, you have to have a vision for how to make everything go together. So before I come up with the name of one thing, if I'm going to be doing a collection of things, I, I really try really hard to commit to a name that I know can work for other things. So as I was toying around with Be So Fine and wondering how would that work with anything else, I was listening to the Spice Girls. <laughs> and when I was listening to the Spice Girls, I was thinking that we have a posh spice, we have a baby spice, we have a sporty spice, and we have, I can't think of the other one now that I'm talking, but um, I'm sure you all are familiar with the Spice Girls. And so I thought, be so fine, and I thought, wow, it's kind of like giving you an, a suggestion to do something positive, right? Be so fine, be so good, right? And then the sport weight, I thought, well, sporty sounds cute and then be so bold and be so brave. It just kind of became monikers for, you know, be empowered. And so it just became something really fun and it worked. Uh, I still love all the names and I still think they all work together collectively and they're still absolutely originally inspired by um, the Spice Girls. <laughs> Am I ready for St. Patrick's Day tomorrow? Uh, not really. I uh, made a batch of my fermented sauerkraut last week. It, it's Scary Spice, that's the other name. And that didn't work for yarn, so we left her out. <laughs> but she kind of, but that kind of sounds like, be so bold or be so brave works fine for her though, because she is bold and brave. So like I said, it was loosely based on it, but it was a, it was a start. Uh, so going back to the um, St. Patrick's Day question, I made a batch of my fermented sauerkraut last week and it did not turn out right. So uh, I'm not going to have sauerkraut tomorrow. Not sure if I'm going to even do the traditional corn brief for Marlon or not. I believe he has some things he wants to do with his friends. So I'm not even sure if he'll be home for a proper dinner tomorrow night. Now, as far as knitting and crochet, I did make some lucky four-leaf clovers a couple weeks ago. And if you pop over to my blog, you can download the pattern. You can also watch the videos for it on my YouTube channel. So if you want to make any decorations for a parade or for any type of themed party you're going to tomorrow, you have plenty of time to make a bunch. They don't take very long to make at all, and they're super cute. So I will probably wear my uh, four-leaf clover tomorrow for good luck. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And I know I won't be coming this far south to the beach because there is a uh, there's a parade down here in Naples tomorrow. So I'll probably try to stay away from that traffic. Good morning, Judy. Oh, Karen, that sounds so cute. Can you take a picture of it and share it in the Facebook group, Create, Share, Inspire? Ah, it's getting a little bit warmer, yay. My grandpa's birthday was on St. Patrick's Day, and we always used to get together for his birthday and do the corned beef dinner. So like his birthday dinner was always the traditional corned beef dinner. Anna has a birthday party tomorrow. That sounds fun, too. 
Okay, so I'm going to show this to you again because you can really see the contrast now between the round scallops and how pointed they become just by adding a few longer stitches to the mix. Can you see that? Yeah, it's a long row. It's going to take a while. Brandy, which of my yarns would I recommend for crocheting a clutch? Well, I'll show you some. I'm working on an idea with Biso. Um, it depends on if you want it felted or not, because Biso Braid felts really nicely for a bag. But then if you're going to do something more traditional, like a market bag, this is done in Biso Bear, which when it's dyed is Biso Serene yarn. So that's organic cotton sport weight. That makes a nice bag. The felting makes a nice bag. Um, I would probably, I, I think if I were making a clutch, depends on if I wanted it felted or not. I would either do Brave for felting or I would do um, Brave for felting. I lost my train of thought. Or Be So Serene for um, regular stitch work. That's what I would choose. Although, Be So Bold, if you want to go thicker, Be So Bold would be really pretty too. Isn't this a cute bag? I love this bag. I don't know why I'm not carrying it all the time. I've had it tucked in this bag. I found it the other day, so I need to pull it out because it's so cute. I need to use it more. Oh, happy birthday, Shirley. Oh, felting. That's a great question. I'm so glad you asked if you didn't already know. This bag is knit in wool that when it goes in the washing machine shrinks up and becomes this solid fabric. Notice how you can barely see the stitches anymore? That's because it, when you felt it or put it agitated in hot water and soap in the washing machine, it shrinks down the fabric so that it becomes this transformed look. Like here, you can barely see the stitches in there because they get shrunk in together. So it condenses it, it makes it smaller, and uh, with this particular yarn, it's still really soft too, but a much more sturdy fabric. See, look at these handles. These were done in knit eye cord and you can't even see the stitches anymore. That's how shrunk down it gets when it's felted. It's really cool. Oh, Shirley shared some lyrics. I missed it. I'll have to scroll back and watch later. I guess that's the beauty of Facebook Live is that we're saving, I get to see the comments. On YouTube Live, I didn't get to see them. I still miss YouTube Live, though. But that's that's change for you, right? Oh yes, Brandy, you can definitely crochet uh, felt with crochet. I have a couple of patterns on my website. In fact, I have a laptop case that's crocheted and felted on my website that you might be able to convert into a clutch pattern. That's what I would suggest you start with. Hi, Trina. That's my sister, Trina, joining us. It's 41 degree degrees here. That's why I'm dressed so crazy. Doesn't look like South Florida clothes, I know. <laughs> Thank you. She lives in Michigan. This is weather more appropriate for where she lives. Karen, that sounds cool. She crocheted a felted hook, a hook pouch. Yep, felting is fantastic for making dense fabric. I love felting. It completely transforms the project and the fabric. And sometimes you don't even have to line it because it's so thick. Oh, the waves sound so pretty today. 
Oh, I know. People will start coming down to the beach very soon now as it warms up. Why don't we take our last minute here to take a long look at this beautiful color palette presented by nature. Soak in a couple more of those amazing sounds of the waves crashing on the shore. Thank you all so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend some time with me here this morning. I hope you enjoyed watching the sunrise at the beach with me. I hope you enjoyed the sound of the waves and this amazing, spectacular view. Hope you enjoyed hanging out with me and talking about knitting and crochet and everything else we talk about. If you like this video, please click the like button. Please share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel for more videos. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great Friday, everyone. Bye.